afternoon. This is a video on how to remove a main board from a Phantom 3 Professional or a Phantom 3 Advanced. Now, the board part number is spare part 96. And it's important to know that number, especially if you have the new motors, which are 2312 Alpha, I believe. Part 96 is used for units with the new motors. Part 33 is a unit that's used with the old motors, which we don't have here. These are the new motors. Okay, so in a moment, we'll get into this here and show you how to uh, actually remove the board. The first thing you need to do is remove the top half of the shell. That can be a little bit difficult. And as a matter of fact, I thought that was the hardest part about the whole job. The important thing to know is that there are now some clips on the inner edge of the lower frame that hold the top frame in place. And the tool that I found to use that works best, at least for, my, for me, was the automotive molding removal tools, which you can find at any automotive store. And you basically use these tools to pop the molding uh, from inside your, your automobile. So I found that to work best. Anyway, I've gone ahead and, and taken care of that. And as you remove this, normally you won't be able to remove this simply like that, but you'll have to disconnect the GPS, which is here. And this wire connects right to here, to that plug. So you have to remove that. So don't just yank the top off. I'll put that on the side. So this is the main board. Now I've already gone ahead and done some work on this board. I've already unsoldered the wires just to speed the process a little bit. But it's really very simple. It's not much to do. As long as you know how to, to solder and unsolder, you, sh you should be fine. Okay. There are one, two, three, four, five, six plugs to disconnect from this board. This being the GPS. Uh, once you have that taken care of, then you can unsolder these connections here. This is where the motor and the LED board gets connected to. The larger gauge wires are the motor, which get connected here, here, and here. And the thinner gauge wire for the LED get connected here, here, and here. That's where they're removed from. Okay, so it's really very simple. It's not difficult at all to take that out. Matter of fact, I think when you get the unit, the wires are actually coming up through these slots in the board to kind of keep them down. And then DJI actually put a bead of glue, it looks like, like a white silicone of some sort, across the, uh, the wires to keep them in place. I don't particularly think that they're necessary. The solder should do the job as long as you solder the wires on and these, these here clips, uh, rather these slots here, seem to be pretty, uh, pretty good at holding the wire. Okay, so once you've got all of that soldered, you can go ahead and and uh, disconnect all of your your plugs. Fairly simple to do. And each plug has a uh, like a connection part that you have to kind of squeeze. It's got like a lock. You have to kind of squeeze it to unfree it from the uh, from the jack. So I want to beat up these wires. Okay, just unplug these. That's all good. Okay, so in addition to unsoldering the motor leads and the LED leads, you have to also unsolder the power main power to the board. It's your hot lead and your ground. Okay. And once you have that all done, you can just pop the board out. Oh, wait, I forgot to remove the screws. There's actually four screws. There's four screws that hold the board in. One, two, three, and four. I've already removed three. So I forgot, to, forgot about that. Anyway, we just undo that. 
And once you have those screws out, you can just pop the board out. And that's it. It's the whole thing. Now, on the underside of the board, you'll see this little hatchway or a micro SD slot. Uh, you, DJI had some glue along the edge here that um, kept this here from opening. So I took a razor blade and gently went across the edge and was able to free this up. But what this is, is, uh, is where a four gigabyte uh, uh, SanDisk card or mi micro SD card fits in here. And that's where your your flight data gets recorded. When you download your flight data, it comes off of that uh, off that stick. So basically, you just pop it out. And this actually is still good too. So it's not a problem with this. So, so there's the board, part 96. Now, one of the things you need to know regarding what I was saying before about part 93, and I'm sorry, part 96 and part 33. There is one slight visual difference between the two boards so you can tell which one you're getting. This piece here on a part 96 is metal. On a part 33, it's plastic like this, black plastic, and has some gibberish written on it as well. It's the part number or whatever, but it's plastic on the part 33. Now keep in mind that the part 33 can only be used with the old motors. That comes directly from the DJI website. Part 96 you can only use with the new motors. Okay, So if you wanted to swap out your old motors for new motors, you'd actually have to change this board. This board's not cheap. You can find that uh, I, I found a couple of different places that have different prices. I don't know why some places are very expensive and other places seem to be a little bit more reasonable. But anyway, so that's the removal of the board. We'll be back with the new board and show you how to install that. Okay, so we're back with uh, the new board. Comes packed very, very well. Box and uh, this black styrofoam case. It's actually pretty good. Comes packed very well. And I just want to kind of release this from there. And this would be the new board. Okay. Part 96. And as you can see, part 96, the new one has the metal box. Again, part 33, this is plastic. So, we're just going to insert this in here, get all the wires out of the way. And this will just fit in here like this. There you go. Very gently fit in. You just got to uh, make sure that the wires are fitting in there very nicely. Tuck them down inside. This should be good. Our power leads here. Okay. And that's it. The board is the board's in place and the screw holes are lined up. So we can put the screw holes in if you want. Looks like uh, we'll probably have to add some bits of solder to the pads, as you can see here. One, two, these are the small the pads for the narrow gauge uh, wire, thin gauge wire for the LED boards. It's one, two, and three. And the circular pads are for the heavier gauge 
motor wires. It uh, shouldn't be too difficult to do. Okay, we're back with the board in position, and what we're going to do now is we're going to apply solder to uh, all of the uh, the tabs that need to have solder on them. This way, uh, when we attach the wire, the wire will just adhere to the pad rather than trying to uh, do everything all at once. So we're just going to uh, add some solder to each pad. Don't need too much. Small little amount will do. Heat up that pad. Let the solder stick to the pad. And you need a very fine point soldering tool to do this. Just like that. Gotta heat this up really good. I use the foam backing that came with the unit just for su support and I have everything sitting on top of a, uh, a larger box just to bring it up closer to the magnifying hoop that I'm using doing this otherwise I'd never be able to see all of this It'd be pretty tough So as you can see, we're just applying solder to the tabs, and solder will stick to the pads, and uh, we'll just heat it up again. We're ready to hit it with the wire. Should be good. Just let that solder flow really well onto the pad. You make sure you want that whole pad covered. You want a good amount on there. Not, not a good amount, but enough to, to cover the pad so that when you attach the wire, you don't have to really worry too much about cold solder joints or anything like that. It's like that. Seems pretty uh, pretty easy to do. Not too, not too difficult. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the rest of the board, and we'll be back. Okay, we're back with the board finally soldered, at least the tabs finally soldered. And as you can see, you just basically go around each four sections of the board and add some solder to the tabs all the way around. Okay, all four sections. And don't forget to do the power. Okay, this is your main power section here. And that's the only solder you have to add to the board. So once that's done, you're ready to insert the board into the unit and start attaching the wires to the solder joints. We'll be back with that. Okay, we're back and we've got all four sides soldered in place here, 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 and here. The only thing left to do is to solder the main power leads. But as you can see, everything is in place and wires tucked underneath and uh, that's it next we'll do the uh, main power leads we'll be right back with that okay we're back with the main power leads soldered in place here and here and now all we have left to do is reconnect all of the jumpers and that should do it so get this all set up in here nice nice this is definitely not meant for guys with big fingers man Good there. And then 
nice plug there. And that's it. There you have it. The new part 96 board uh, reinstalled on a Phantom 3 Professional. And should be good, good as new. Thanks for watching.